All right, well, welcome everyone today, Mr. Brian's Amazing World. I'm going to answer the question that a lot of you have been asking for quite some time. What exactly is this thing sitting in your driveway? Okay, well, it's a solar kiln for drying lumber. Yes, yes. So, uh, let me try to explain how this works here. It is 18 feet long, 5 feet wide, I believe 10 feet tall in the back. And what it is, is two layers of polycarbonate plastic overlining each other, set at the proper angle, which I believe is 43 degrees based on the latitude that I'm at. Pretty cool stuff, right? And you want to catch the angle of the sun with that. So, it's a box that the sun shines on, the walls are black in the back, it reflects all the heat inside that, gets really hot, you circulate that air around wood, you dry the wood and you blow all the humidity and moisture out of the wood, bringing the concentration of moisture from you know, like 25, 30% down to 6%. And it's pretty neat. You can see bone dry pieces that hardly weigh anything when you're done with them. And sometimes they twist and curl and it helps prevent that. Get it out of the way now while you can when you're drying your wood. Yeah, I really like where that's going. But, uh, okay, so this kiln here, Oh, I don't even know where to start with this. There's so much going on with this thing. I built this 15 years ago from the sawmill. I mean, I cut all this wood. And I guess a dead giveaway of what it is is the fact that it has a tire on the back. So that tire there indicates that it must be a trailer of sorts. And if you come around here, you can see the hitch and stuff attached to it. Now mind you, this entire thing is built out of wood. So that's the only pieces of metal there. And there's an axle from an old trailer running across. The rest of this is all wood. All right, let's start at the very bottom, I suppose. And, uh, geez. No, I don't even know where to start. Again, maybe we'll take a look in here first, on this side. I have doors on each side. Let's go back to here. The angle, 43 degrees, because I'm at 43 degrees latitude. You might want to change that based upon where you are. I'm in Northern Hemisphere, so that's that. You want to angle it towards the sun. And right now, well, you can see the sun is shining on it and it's early morning, catching this early angle of the sun as the day goes through. At noon, it's pretty much right in line with this, catching full rays of the sun. And as it comes across at the end of the day, it's still catching the sunlight over this direction. All right, let me take you back over here and kind of go through where I was explaining this. I keep bouncing all over the place. It's, there's so much to say about this thing, it's hard to follow one particular uh, direction with it. So, I guess in designing this kiln, I followed a couple ideas and practices the angle and the size, five feet wide. I made this 18 feet long for a reason. And I put doors on both ends. Okay, and then you can get in there. So, if you look, you can see this is quite the pile of wood, all stacked across there, and stickered and ready to go. The sun comes through this, hits this back wall. Yeah, move here. The sun hits this back wall, which is black. And behind this, it's all insulated. The floor of this kiln is also insulated. The walls on the side and the front are not, and they're open for the reason that when this gets hot, it gets humid in here. You're taking, you know, 30 degree moisture content in these boards, and you're basically, uh, you could almost imagine it like a bathroom when you get out of the shower. It's, it's steamy. You won't see it, but it's in there. You, that humidity is circulated around with fans. Now there's an air, you can see a fan down there, and there's a channel that it can draw air in here. The hot, humid, or hot, dry air will come through here, get blown through the stack of wood, and come out through here and a lot of it will go down underneath and go through these cracks and blow the high humidity out that way other bits of it will come back around get dried out by the sun and the heat again moisture may condensate along the roof run down and drip out the bottom meanwhile the hot moist dry air goes back around and continues to pull the moisture out of the wood cool thing about this kill you only need a few degrees of temperature differential to make this start to work and have an effect so it can be 30 degrees outside, and if it's 34 degrees inside the kiln, it's going to start that convection and drying, uh, and actually start working. Kind of neat, kind of really cool. 
summertime this thing will get 140 degrees in here and you can dry wood really fast in like a week the whole pile will be dry winter time it may take you the whole winter to dry a stack like this based on the amount of temperature differential and good days you can get for actually drying then the next problem is you got to be able to process it go through it move it and store it so this is one side maybe uh take you around here show you what we have see now we're going to do some maintenance on this it's been 15 years of using this kiln and it's seen better days like we have quite a bit of stuff to fix some of these boards are moved if i take you around to this side you know again you can see a little bit we got to fix this wall i'll show you how all this goes now i made this 18 feet long so i can fit 16 foot six inch boards inside this and still be able to drive really long stuff and cut it off the sawmill that's the length here you're working with also did some other really cool stuff uh man maybe we'll fix this front and then i'll show you exactly what we did so that'll make it a little bit better before we kind of destroy everything here so follow along and let me show you what this thing really does Now these old boards, they're hopefully rotted. They've seen better days, so, you know. Granted, this is just pine. I had milled this 15 years ago, built this kiln, and didn't treat any of it, and it lasted 15 years. I'd say that's awesome to be sitting out in the weather, and all we have to really replace is this one bottom edge. So we'll take it. Progress, right there. I mean, all right. Our bottom board is back in. New fascia on there. And uh, the old pieces are pretty rotted and destroyed, so now... Well, it's a big improvement. We can show you what this thing really does. All right. All right. So I guess if you're checking out this channel and this video, you already know why you really want to have a kiln in the first place for drying your lumber. I mean, it makes it a lot easier to market it and sell it. Everybody wants dried lumber. They don't want to get air dried stuff because then it's going to move and shrink and warp and twist a whole lot easier and a whole lot more often. Uh, I may as well keep screwing this yeah. and then we can okay. finish it up. Uh, let's see. Really didn't take a whole lot to build this figure, and I had all the lumber from, you know, the sawmill. It was just, okay, let's use this pile of pine and cut it and turn it into this. I figured board and batten was a nice, easy way to do it. I was planning on putting the battens in there, and it worked perfectly to have that spacing once the boards dried to allow the humidity and the moist air to escape from inside the kiln. I think over on this end, you might have one or two yeah. more, and then we can show you everything else on this. Yeah, the polycarbonate for the panels on the, the roof are the only thing that I really had to buy for this. A couple hundred bucks, and that was 15 years ago. So they're still working pretty well. They've flopped around and blown around a little bit in storms. You have to do some repairs here and there. Other than that, you definitely want to have two layers of it. If you only have one, you don't get the proper heat trapped in between. And... Hmm. <laughs> Screw that in and let's finish it up. All right. You need a hand screwing, babe? I sure do. All right. <laughs> cool. So, now the best part. Let me move a few of these boards here. We can take that one and this one. All right. Now, I'll take this board and go over here for a minute. Wait till you see this. This is gonna blow your mind. Okay. Now, I grew up in the '80s. Okay. So growing up in the '80s as a kid, it meant transformers and micro machines. So when you're exposed to that kind of stuff, everything did cool things and fit everywhere. So, without further ado, when designing this, I figured, let's make this neat. Let's make this easy. I can. I'll explain. All right, this little hole is here and it's missing these boards for a reason. And this wall is kind of floppy. You got to work with us. That's why we're repairing a few things right now. Babe, why don't yeah. you come over here and man this board. Now, here's what you do. You take this board here, you stand about here, 
I'm going to, I want you to put this right on there, I'll show you. So, go back like you had it, put the bottom back where I had it. Just like that, okay? Okay, ready? Kind of high on that end. So basically, single-handedly, I've lifted this roof up. Just like that, two two by fours, single-handedly I prop this roof up. Cool, right? It gets even cooler than that. Now, we have some work to do with our hinges. Things are kind of, you know, starting to see better. They've seen better days. But, this is the best part. Undo there. Maybe grab on this end, because... Okay. This whole thing we got to re-bolt together. It's going to pull flop together. Just flop what you're doing. Lay that one like that. Cool. And try to come down quick. All right. So, there you go. There's the transformers. There's the micro machine stuff. Normally, this is bolted up together, but we have some issues that we have to deal with. However, it was really great like this. I can come up here with the backhoe, with the forks drive, get right under this, pick this whole pile up, and drive it out of here. All done. I'm not moving stuff constantly through the little side doors. Every one of these kilns that I came across only had side doors, and it seemed like a nightmare to try to get in there and stack and move and do anything. So, pretty cool. You build a wall that goes up and a roof that lifts out of the way, and then you had a ramp door to walk on, which is what we have to repair here today. But I couldn't wait to make this video and show you what we made and what we do to dry wood here. Uh, what was your thought of that? Mm -hmm. That's really impressive. Really impressive? Yeah. You didn't think it was all going to open up? Did you know it all no. opened up like that? I think you had mentioned it. Mentioned it. Yeah. It doesn't really make sense. It works. It's practical. It is, and it works so well. I mean, we don't have to spend any money on fuel to heat this to dry the wood out. Now that I can get in here easily, easier, I can show you. I have a nice little cherry burl here just sitting. Actually, that's a maple burl. Sitting there waiting to go. And yes, we stored a little bit of other weird stuff in here, like an old baby pool and some copper pipe, but kept it out of the way. And you can see this is just black plywood. It's insulated to help hold the heat and reflect it back in. This floor, well, it's seen better days too. We do have a little bit of work to do here. But this is also insulated under here. We we'll probably have to address some of this. I'll fix this wall. Overall, pretty cool that it's worked this well. And for this long, and it's seriously added a lot of value to all the lumber that we've been able to produce here. You just sticker it, stack it, and go. And like I said, I, went, I made it 18 feet wide, minus 6 inches on each side. You're still at 17 feet, so you can fit a 16 foot, 6 inch long board or pile of wood in here and dry some really long, big stuff. That was kind of important with the design of what I did. And really, so far, the only thing we had to do was replace this bottom edge, which rotted. And now a little bit down here, because, well, we never really paid much attention to it, and we let it go. And now I can pull all this wood out, process it, and, you know, run it through the planer, get it up for sale. It doesn't matter what kind of wood you make it out of? No, you can make this, uh, let's see here, you need to stand like this. Say that all again? <laughs> it doesn't matter what kind of wood you make it out. Uh, no, I would use anything you have laying around. Whatever you're running through the mill, uh, this happens to be fine. What about, like, a treated lumber oh, with chemicals? Treated? Yeah, you can use it if you're getting it for free, why not? And uh, I would try not to spend any money on it. Granted, it's going to last longer if certain parts were treated. Maybe we'll replace some bottom boards with treated stuff. Uh, you probably want to veer away from using oak, or maple's going to rot pretty quick as well. Okay. Pine held up a lot better than I expected to. Everybody, oh, it's going to rot and fall apart really quick. To get 15 years out of a board that just sat out in the weather is way more than I expected. And it looks kind of neat, the other boards that are weathered and have this pattern to them. They're still perfectly structurally solid. They're bone dry from sitting out in the sun all this time. And I'm sure I'll use them one day down the road for some other unique project. Well, let's see. So we showed you what the kiln does and what it can do. Having it on wheels. I mean, come on. If you're going to bother making this thing, put it on wheels. It's the perfect thing. I've moved this from the front of the house to the side of the house, all over. If it's in the way a little bit, you can jockey it around. Things always change. And you can put it in the best position for the sun. 
where it works best for you. And granted, it still works even if it's not in the sun directly, but obviously you want to catch as much of the solar gain as you possibly can. What I miss? The construction is just impressive. For a wooden trailer? <laughs> and I mean, it flops around and moves. I wouldn't haul it down the road, but around the property. I've pulled it with the backhoe. I've got it really stuck back there before. Is it normally made with the painted, with the black painted? Uh, well, you need the black to get the solar gain off of it. Mm -hmm. If it's just plywood, it wouldn't get as hot. The black makes it like a car in a parking lot. You know, a white car's not that hot, but a black one, forget it. You don't even want to go near it. And like I said, it'll get 140 degrees in here in the summer. You need these fans going all the time. Would a tin roof work? Well, you need the sun to be able to go through it and heat the oh, inside. Oh, oh, oh. I guess that tin roof would heat up a little bit, but you need it to but really... sun itself. Yeah, the heat from the sun is passing right through those plastic panels and heating up against the back wall. And then it's trapped like an envelope between the plastic panels and the back wall. That's an awesome question. So I would have missed that, and that's kind of crucial. The big thing is the air circulation through it, so you end up blowing the humidity. I mean, it, it's all going to come through every one of these boards, and then it blows right through the front. You lose a lot of the moisture right through that way. The transpiration. I don't know, check out our other videos. We have a bunch of stuff on the sawmill coming up and I'll take the trees down and other firewood, the boiler. Oh my God, the boiler. We kind of have this set here because we have an outdoor wood boiler that's homemade as well. Make sure to check out that video. Those are awesome. But we were going to tap into that to heat this for the winter time to help, you know, dry wood quicker. I guess I never progressed on a commercial scale to need that. That's fine. It's enough work as it is just moving wood around. But uh, if we ever move to that level, we're capable of doing that very easily, adding a little radiator fans or anything to add heat from the boiler into this. Hmm. I think that kind of sums it all up. The coolest thing is that it opens up like a transformer, and it just simply, you fold this up. I made it in two sections on the bottom. I had it as one, and it was a lot for me by myself. If it's just one, you can boop, boop, and then both sides are up. And then uh, this, the roof, you saw me single-handedly pick that up. And sure, it has a sag, it has a smile. We can bolt that together maybe to make it a little stronger, but it's been working this well for this long. Kind of go with it. And the cat likes to live in it in the winter as well. Yeah. We did leave the space for the tire for when the wall opens, it clears the tire. And we have our work cut out otherwise. If you have any questions, please comment, please like, subscribe, Mr. Brian's Amazing World, and check us out. Yeah.